Now it's time to put these guys on the clock where they have one minute as a group, about 15 seconds each, give or take, to explore a few more notable headlines from the week. First up, his name became synonymous with corruption in New Mexico, Manny Aragon I'm talking about, the former Senate pro tem, and he is a major power broker, still is, was released from federal prison this week to home confinement after serving four and a half years for defrauding the state in a courthouse construction project. Even his opponents from his political days Recall he knew how to get things done, but many now see his legacy as a symbol of ongoing corruption here in New Mexico. And after his downfall, I'll remind you, a law was passed cutting off pensions for public officials convicted of felonies. But that does not apply to Mr. Aragon, who was using his pension to pay his $1,000 a month restitution. Rob, any heartburn about that? That's taxpayer money. What's your, what's your sense of that? No, I, I think that Manny Aragon's political career is over mm -hmm. and done with. And, but I think his lasting legacy will be that symbol. We've had, a, as a state, a long history, long tragic history mm -hmm. of political corruption. And I, I think that the, the upshot of that is that the unfortunate thing, and maybe that goes beyond the, the Manny Aragon case, is that you've, there's almost become a sense of, well, this is just part of the way to play the political right. game in New Mexico. And let's hope that changes. Exactly right. This building's named after him. I mean, it's no small oh, they're, figure, they're you know. losing his name as well. That's right. I think that is part of the legacy, and it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But for me, you know, looking at this and, and having worked in other states, I think it, you mm -hmm. know, term limits are something that are very useful in terms of getting people out. He was in there for 30 years, right. almost 30 years. That's right. And, uh, and, you know, at some point we have to figure out when is the right time to tell people that, okay, you, you know, your time with the state right. is done now sure. and let's get a new crop of people in there because yeah. that sort of corruption I think continues. Sure. Continue. 10 seconds Tom? Uh, you know I hopefully you know through all this process we've found a way to uh, you know better protect the public procurement process eliminate the appearance of conflict of interest right and uh, you know discourage uh, you know people from doing what was done before. And sometimes you need these situations to get to that point. Sure. That's just politics. You need to have a blow up to get to some better place. A state police officer who fired at a fleeing minivan with five children inside near Taos was himself fired this past week after an internal investigation. Elias Montoya said he was trying to shoot out the tires of the van whose driver had fled after being pulled over for speeding. Governor Susana Martinez supported his termination because, quote, you don't use deadly force against someone who is not threatening you with deadly force, end quote. But there was growing support among some Tausenos for Mr. Montoya, with many saying he's a good officer, and Mr. Montoya plans to, to appeal his firing. Laura? The protests. It, people have a right to support him, certainly. I'm, Laura, you're over here. Sorry, I have the right to uh, support, sorry, his protests. But, you know, it, it, it's an, it, was that the right decision, first of all, to fire the man? Um, I, I personally don't believe that was the right decision. Okay. Why? Uh, mainly because I've watched the entire 45 minutes worth of um, the incident. Mm -hmm. And there were several times when the driver had the opportunity to, mm -hmm. you know, to do the right thing and chose to not do the right thing. And I, I, well, let me I ask you this. Is there a line where that the gun has to come out? I mean, just because she didn't do the right thing, does the gun have to come out? Well, I think that, you know, people are looking at deadly force as yeah. the gun. Uh, you know, a van full of people and a, a whole lot of kids coming out and starting to attack an officer. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing was a mess. you don't know if they have a weapon or not. It was a big mess, and there could have been a lot of other points where the driver yeah. could have done something different. Antoinette, your sense of it? I think that he, um, he made a mistake, okay. and I'm not sure that that firing, um, it, it's interesting. I, Was this to I, save some New Mexico face nationally yeah, somehow? Yeah, that's kind or? of how I, look, I okay. look at this. I think they should have looked at the, at the whole situation and then his whole career. I mean, it seemed like a very quick firing, yeah. and I don't know whether you got due process. And this will come out in the appeal, certainly. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, from a public relations perspective, you know, the state police, uh, police chief went and met the protesters, right. which I thought was a brilliant Alone. move. Alone? Right. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. he says, come on, let's let's talk, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and then to Antoinette's point, you know, yes, I think it was too quick a call. I mean, it was just like so fast. It was like so, wow, okay, cool. Let's get this out of the national spotlight as quickly as possible. Interesting there. Governor Susana Martinez campaigned on a promise to make government more transparent. But many media and open government advocates have criticized her administration for not being more open. Now the Associated Press has filed suit against the governor and state agencies for refusing to release information about her work travel schedules, cell phone calls, and expenses of the security officers who travel with the governor. Antoinette, Governor Martinez maintains her administration is the most transparent in state history and the AP requests reasonable in your view, unreasonable. Do we really need to know her travel schedule or is this just really the AP just trying to do its job and the administration needs to figure this out as well? I, I think I, the problem is when the media asks you for something, you don't provide it. Right. They're always very suspicious that you're trying to hide something. That's right. So my advice to people is 
just provide it right. and they'll go away. So I just don't understand this. That's a good point, Rob. Yeah, and you know, you ask. I mean, you and, know, right? And, and remember, <laughs> yeah. um, there, there, there was a big flap about uh, the, when the governor's uh, husband w went to Louisiana That's right. That's right. for a hunting trip. At, and it, it took months and months, and there was all this speculation. That's and it right. turns out they did eventually turn it over. So they turned the records over, a lot of the records over, and there wasn't there wasn't any smoke for the fire. That's right. So I, I agree with that. But you know, I'll just say one very quick thing. I have had it with transparency because there are so many people who like to talk the talk about transparency, <laughs> but they don't walk the walk. And it's not just the governor; it's the legislative right. office uh, and also the judiciary. I'll take it all the way to the White House. How's yeah, that? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm dead serious. It's a big issue for a lot of people right now. Your sense of this one, the AP, they're just trying to get uh, some some work done for constituents for us New Mexicans. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you can't say that you're the most transparent um, governor in the history, and then at the same time withhold simple things like a schedule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Tom, your sense of that too? Well, you know, governor's office does say that they're being transparent. I, you know, mm -hmm. I think some things, uh, you know, do we really need to know? Right. Uh, I, that's what, that's where I think this comes down. She's also said it's, a, or someone in the administration has said it's a safety issue as well for the governor. That one's a little hard to check. Yeah, I mean, I, I could make a connection with that. I mean, I could yeah. see, you know, uh, there are some different arguments far much longer and larger than this uh, brief segment and stuff. But I think sure. that, you know, the Associated Press makes requests and they get denied. That's a very trusted organization. Right. And uh, that sends up with some red flags. That's a very unfair criticism of the state police, too, to say this is just a, you know, this is a safety issue. She has a state police, you know. That's right. With Basically, her, right? yeah, who's guarding her, who's making sure. That's so, right. you know, they're professionals. They know what they're doing. Exactly right. Thank you all. Really good stuff here. Got some more on the web coming up, too. Thank you all for your time, too. As always, all of us here at New Mexico in Focus appreciate your time and your effort to stay informed and engaged. Catch up with us anytime on social media by searching New Mexico in Focus. And you can find archived interviews and lots of bonus material from our shows on our YouTube channel and at NewMexicoInFocus.org. I'm Gene Grant. We'll see you next week in Focus.